What is going on, movie theater fans? And if you are not paying attention to the news, we got some interesting dark tidbits from AMC Theaters today. The number one largest theater chain in existence that somehow seems like they are the number one most determined to destroy the theater industry. So announced today by AMC Theaters is that in the couple of major cities in the US as a test market and then eventually going to be rolled out to the rest of the country, they are implementing a new seat pricing tier strategy to where the theater seats all the way at the front of the theater, the shitty ones that nobody wants, they'll be at a slight discount. They didn't say how much, a dollar, two dollars, five cents. We don't know. The regular pricing will be for all of the average seats, presumably the ones that are kind of like on the outskirts, on the edges, you know, decent seats, not the best ones. And the seats that everybody buys first, that they go and try to pre-order or they try to get to the theater early to snag, the theater seats in the middle with the best audio quality, with the best sight line of the theatrical screen, those are gonna get a price hike. Again, we don't know how much, a dollar, two dollars, we have no idea, but they're gonna be more expensive than their traditional pricing. Now, why is this a horrible idea? Why are AMC continuing to do things to drive people away from their own damn industry? And what are five ways that I think would be a much smarter way to try to improve the business of movie theaters? I'll get into all that in just a second. But really quick, if you are interested in keeping your online identity and finances safe while you browse tickets for a theater other than AMC, let's talk about the sponsor of today's video, Aura. We live in a time where now more than ever, bigger and bigger pieces of our lives are attached to online accounts and social media, which makes cybersecurity and identity theft a bigger concern than ever. In fact, identity theft is the fastest growing crime in the country with a new victim every 14 seconds, which is why I'm I'm excited to partner with Aura, which is an easy to use app that has every single tool that you will need to browse the internet safely. There's identity theft protection, fraud monitoring, a VPN service, password management, and antivirus software. And I'm sure most of you watching probably have one or two of these tools, but if you don't have all of them, it's like locking all of your doors while leaving every window in the house open. And let's be honest, it's much easier and much more appealing to have all those tools under one belt than it is to have them in multiple apps and multiple different payments. In fact, the day that I activated my account, Aura gave me over 50 notifications of my email address showing up on the dark web, which is a corner of the internet that hackers use to sell your personal information. You'll even have near real-time notifications of credit inquiries in the event that somebody's trying to open up a credit card or take out a loan in your name. So let Aura do the heavy lifting and keeping you safe online by using my exclusive link and getting a 14-day free trial. And you will be shocked at how much of your personal information they protect just in those 14 days. So go to Aura.com slash Cody Leach or use this QR code to start your trial of Aura today. And thank you to Aura for sponsoring today's video. So as far as why this is a horrible idea that baffles me that AMC is so smug, sharky, and stupid to implement something like this, I honestly think it kind of goes without saying. I can't imagine that there is anybody on the consumer side that would be interested or excited about this. I do understand the small segment of it of maybe offering the shitty seats in the theater for a slightly less price, maybe a dollar. Those are the theater seats that are hard to sell out. And there are some people that dislike them so much that they would rather wait for another showing than to have to sit in those seats. And so that's a little bit of a motivation to fill out your theater, to offer more value to the consumer. Who the hell would have thought of that? is to maybe offer those at a slight discount. I can understand and appreciate that idea. Don't know if it would work, but I appreciate the idea. As far as hiking the price for the best seats in your theater to where I'm sitting here and I'm paying $10 and the dude sitting four seats to the right of me is paying $12 or $13. Yeah, I got something to say about that, AMC. Go fuck yourself. In a time where it is undoubtedly a fact that the theater industry is struggling and have been struggling for the past number of years, the amount of people sitting at home and experiencing movies and TV shows and content at home as opposed to taking the family out and dropping money to go to a theater, that disparity only gets bigger as the days go on. And 2020 and the events of the past couple of years only made it worse. And so where theaters should have their motivations being how to draw more people to the theater, how to improve the theatrical experience to get more people excited and entertained and interested about coming back to the theater. 
AMC decides to go the darker route and to say, oh, well, fuck all those people. The people that are still coming to our theaters, those sad sons of bitches, we'll just screw them over. That'll get that'll get our bottom line better. And the unfortunate fact about this is that if they do, in fact, go through with it, if the public outcry is not big enough to dissuade them from trying this and it doesn't completely blow up in their face, it's only a matter of time before Regal and Cinemark and Carmike and Landmark Theaters and all these other chains follow suit and do something very similar because that's how the theater industry works. It's follow the leader around there. And so that really blows. That really blows because, you know, I'm somebody that I don't have to go to AMC theaters. The only AMC theaters around me are in Savannah. They both are absolute garbage theaters. And so I only go to them if the movie I need to see is only playing at that theater. And that only happens maybe once every two years. So I'm good for the time being. I'll stick with my Georgia theater company. I'll stick with my little uh, independently owned theater here in Pooler, Georgia. I will give them my money. I'll even drive to South Carolina. I'll go 45 minutes out of my way and give my money to Cinemark over in Bluffton before I go to AMC if they do some shit like this. But with that out of the way, as a consumer, as somebody that goes to the movie theater damn near every single week of the year, as somebody that has experienced the best that the theater experience has to offer, as well as the worst numerous times of what this theater experience has to offer. These are five ideas that I have that would actually add value to the consumer that would draw people in and make the theatrical experience better. It also needs to be said that there may be some theater chains out there that do some or maybe even all of these. I would really like to hear find out who that is because they got their shit together. But I am only going off of the experiences of the local theater chains that I have access to that absolutely do not do these things. So the first idea that I have at number five is honestly the least fleshed out idea and probably the most complicated and why I have it the lowest on the list, because I don't know the logistics of this. This might be an impossibility. This might be a ridiculous idea, but it is something that I was thinking of back in 2020 when we were really struggling for ideas of how to get people back in the theater. And I honestly think that there should be some kind of a conversation, if it's not happening already, to where the theater industry, the theater companies, the theater chains get with the movie studios and try to work out some kind of a deal to where there is a premium ticket to where if you go to, we'll say Avatar, if you go to see Avatar the way of the water, everybody else is paying 12 bucks. But if you pay 20 bucks, you can get the digital copy of Avatar The Way of the Water early, or you can get it at a discount that is more than the $8 that you just gave to the theater. Something like that. Again, might be a terrible idea because I don't know the finances and the logistics of how the deals work out between the studios and the theaters. I know the theaters kind of get screwed in the ticket pricing range, but I feel like there should be some kind of an option, at least discussed, to try to add the value of the home experience onto the back end of the theatrical experience, because that's where people are preferring to watch movies nowadays. Not all us psychos that go to every single movie out there and love the theaters, but all your average Joes that say, you know what? I know that's in the theater right now, but I don't feel like spending the money. I don't feel like dealing with the aggravating motherfuckers with their phones. So I'm just going to wait a couple of months and I'll watch it at home whenever it's available. Well, now you could probably get those people in because you can go watch it in the theater, get the theatrical experience, and then you can get that home experience either a little quicker or a little cheaper. It's an idea. Coming in at number four, the next idea that I have is in regards to concessions. Now, I'm somebody that always buys my movie ticket early. I always buy it a couple of days previous or for the bigger movies. I buy it the second it's available online so that I can secure my seat, get the best seat available, and I don't have to worry about standing in line or getting a shitty seat. I'm always an avid Fandango user for that reason. Now, the fringe benefit of getting your tickets early is that when you get to the theater, you don't have to wait in that gigantic line. Unfortunately, the reality is most of us need a drink or popcorn or candy or some kind of a snack for the experience, especially when you see something like Avatar that's three plus hours long. And so you still got to stand in that goddamn line just to get snacks. An idea that I would have is that every single one of these theater chains should all have their own app if they don't already. And in that app, there should be a skip the line function to where you can actually charge an upcharge or a fee or something tacked on to your checkout where you order your popcorn, you order your drink, you order your candy, your nachos, whatever. You check out on the app, you select your theater, you select your seat and you submit it for that upcharge price. 
and they will bring it to the theater, to your seat, and deliver you your concessions, allowing you to sit in the theater and get comfortable and completely skip over the line. And it should also be noted, this is a function that I think should be cut off once the movie starts. I don't want anybody pulling out their phones and you know ordering a second load of nachos when we're two hours into the film. Something that you can do before the movie starts. And I don't know what the upcharge would be. I would pay probably... <laughs> $5 to do that for some movies. If there's 75 people in line, I will happily give you another five bucks. I'll give you seven bucks to bring that shit to me whenever it's ready. So I don't have to stand in that line. So that is an idea that I also think since theater chains are primarily getting their money from concessions, that would really be a neat idea for some of us that aren't as patient as others or are more concerned with convenience and comfort than standing in a line. Coming in at number three, seems like this should be something that is already implemented, but I for the life of me, for the AMC theaters, the Carmike theaters, the Cinemark theaters, the Georgia Theater Company theaters that I have been to, I haven't seen any employee do this in years, like maybe over a decade and a half. There should be somebody on staff that is in charge of walking into every single theater that is currently showing a movie at least twice a showing. I would go as far as to say once every half hour, so maybe even three times per showing, but somebody to walk into the theater, walk up the stairs, stand there for a second, walk back down, give like a five minute window where there is somebody that is employed by this theater available for assistance in case you have somebody that you need to point out as being a nuisance, in case there is maybe a video or audio issue in the movie, in case maybe the lights never dimmed or they're playing something, uh, some issue in the theater. We have all been in a theater at least once or twice where there has been an issue and everybody plays that game where we all know there's an issue, but who's going to be the guy that's going to get up and miss part of the movie to go inform the staff? And I can't tell you how many movies I've sat through the entire thing waiting for somebody else to do that because I ain't missing shit. And so if you had somebody, if you knew, if you had that safety blanket that you're like, okay, it's been about 20 minutes and somebody walked in, I'll just be patient and I'll let the guy know that, you know, the, the, the film's a little blurry or I'll let him know that that asshole over there is throwing popcorn or something like that. There should be somebody on staff to actually go into the theater once the people are seated. And for the life of me, I have never seen anybody do that and so long, I can't even remember the last time. Nobody wants to get up during the movie. Nobody wants to miss part of the movie to go and inform you that something is going awry in your business, whether it's your fault or not. Nobody wants to be that person, and somebody always has to bite the fucking bullet. So put somebody on staff or get somebody that's already on staff that typically stands around for most of the time when there's not people trying to get tickets and have them go walk through the theater for two minutes every 30 minutes. I mean, it can't be that difficult. It can't. Coming in at number two, and I know that there are some theater chains that do this, but not nearly enough of them. Every single theater chain not only should have their own app, but they should all have some form of a loyalty program. Now, I know AMC, the ones that I was shitting on, have the Stubbs membership to where you get to see a certain amount of movies per month. It's a flat fee, and it's, it's a better version of the movie pass debacle we had a few years ago. But even beyond that, even if a theater chain doesn't want to do that type of model, just having some kind of a rewards loyalty for those of us that go every single week. And maybe it tallies up how much money you spend in tickets, in the concession. And after you reach certain benchmarks, you get a free popcorn. You get a free ticket. That really needs to be a thing. The only thing that I have around me that's even similar to that is that you can join a rewards program for free in my local theater. And they'll give you like a dollar off of the combo which at that point doesn't even really feel like it's saving me much because it's already like 35 fucking dollars more than it should be. But think of how many more people would go to the theaters in a more frequent basis if they knew that, hey, if I only go see two more movies, I can go see the third one for free. I've already got this much already banked up. Every single theater should have some version of that to motivate people that are not like myself that are going to be there no matter what because it's their job and because they're a movie whore. But those that maybe go once a month might go three times a month. They might go twice a month. They might go every fucking week. But absolutely, by a landslide, the number one thing that all theater chains need to do to add more value to the movie experience, to draw more people into the theater, to win people back to the theater, is start enforcing the no talking and no cell phone rules. Not a single theater chain that I have ever been to aside from Alamo Drafthouse 
does this. And I will tell you right now, the experience that I had all week long at Alamo Draft House when I went to Fantastic Fest last September and having people on staff and every single movie with a little PSA at the beginning saying, if you get caught talking, you are thrown the fuck out with no refund. If I had an Alamo Draft House near me, I would not go to any other theater chain but Alamo Draft House from henceforth. It is that important of a thing to me. And it is that important to so many of us. I can't tell you how many times that I have gotten comments or I've seen tweets or I've had people interact with me talking about movies, talking about the theater experience that said, I stopped going because I got sick of everybody fucking talking. I got sick of people being on their phones. I got sick of people being such assholes and so inconsiderate that I will just sit my ass at home because the theaters don't do shit to enforce it. And again, nobody wants to get up during the movie to come find you to point somebody out and have this whole altercation saying that guy's been talking the whole movie because they know you're going to come by. You're going to give him a warning. And then that fucking dude's going to glare at you the whole movie or find you in the parking lot. There should be a way like the guy who should be patrolling the theater or somebody that's on staff that actually monitors this shit to have that be a simpler process. Luckily, it's only about two or three times a year that I really have a problem. But when I have a problem, goddamn, do they make it count? I mean, I was in Black Panther Wakanda forever just a few months ago. The guy to the right of me took three phone calls in the first hour of the film. And not like, no, hey, what's going on? Yeah, yeah, I'm in Black Panther. Like that level of phone call. Like, dude, are you fucking kidding me? Am I being punked? To the left of me is a woman with a kid that will not sit still, that will not sit down, that will not settle down, that will not stop talking, that will not stop moving around and flailing around, and she's talking to him the whole entire time, and I understand. I understand how hard it is as a parent sometimes to get kids to sit still for a movie that they don't want to fucking watch, and maybe that was the only way that you could go see Black Panther. I totally sympathize. But where I lose my sympathy is when you hand him a fucking tablet and allow him to play a video game with sound during the play of the movie. Swear to God. On both sides of me, I had stupid and stereo. That's an experience that if I did not do this for a living and I was not the avid movie lover that I was, that is enough of a negative experience that would draw the average person away from the theaters for at least the rest of the year. There is no question that sometimes it is fun to interact during a movie. Sometimes it's fun to react to the movie, whether it's an action movie or a horror movie. That's part of the awesome experience that theaters bring us is having this communal thing going on this this communal synergy with everybody where you're watching something for the first time and you see captain america pick up mjolnir or fucking freddy krueger jumps out of a closet and everybody gets to react oh my god oh i didn't see that coming that is the magic of the theatrical experience but that does not transfer over to those of you idiots that pay money to go to a public fucking showing of a movie with a bunch of other people in public that paid the same money that you did and you want to carry on and have this stupid ass conversation in the middle of a dialogue scene or you want to pull out your phone and check your Instagram or for the love of God, the people that try to Snapchat the movie. And yes, I have had this happen. Absolutely, without a doubt the number one thing that movie theater chains can do to bring people back to the theaters and to keep those of us that do go to the theaters from finding alternative ways of watching our movies is to start enforcing the rules that have been the rules for as long as I have been alive. So with all that being said, what do you think, those of you that are avid movie watchers, or maybe those of you that actually left the theater experience and say, screw it, I will watch it when it comes to my house. What are your ideas to bring you back to the theaters? What would they have to do to bring you back and to make the value of the theatrical experience better for you? And though I don't think anybody's going to have a hot take on this, if you want to talk about the AMC bullshit, please let me know down below your thoughts on that as well. Well, that's it for this one, guys. If you enjoyed this, please check out Aura down in the video description below and keep your online identity safe. Check out the 2023 movie reviews that I've done so far down in this playlist. And I'm also going to put a previous rant from years ago that I did on this subject. It's pretty entertaining back in my old school ranty days. And as always, like, share, hit that subscribe button. And please remember... 
Opinions are like assholes. That doesn't mean you have to be. AMC.